Wow, I thought you just collected toys. No, I am also a most excellent toy maker. This is the story of the making of a toy, from its conceptual beginnings to finding its way into stores and homes everywhere. It started with an idea, countless hours of thought on how to answer the question, what will make the kids of America happy? Uh, let's see. Uh... The first thing that we do is we figure out what are the best toys that fit Scooby-Doo really well. And one of the things that came to our attention is that Scooby-Doo is always eating food. Hey, Scoob, what do you say to a little early morning, late night snackaroo? <laughs> so, we came up with a food toy that would give mom a break and let kids make their own snacks. But what form should this new invention take? We knew we had to delve deep into the subconscious minds of subjects who fit a very specific psychological profile. Subjects with simple, naive, unspoiled thoughts. Like, man, I don't think that'll be a problem. With our toy experts isolated in a top-secret facility, careful scientific analysis uncovered revealing data about Scooby fans. I think we have our first clue. We ask moms questions and we ask kids questions, and it's always fun to ask the kids questions about what they think about Scooby-Doo, and they love him dearly, and they do the Scooby-Dooby-Doo. Scooby-Dooby-Doo! Okay, so we have here our Talking Scooby Snacks Maker. It's our food toy for Scooby-Doo this year. What you get to do with it is you get to make all your favorite gummy treats shaped like Scooby-Doo and Shaggy and all their favorite food. It comes with three flavors and two packets of tart and uh, sweet sugar. So you get with your Mystery Machine shell, and then you turn over the top, and it turns into your sugar tray. And then it comes with two trays where you make your gummy molds, and they're in the fun shapes of all the Scooby characters. Somebody wants to make a meal out of us! Once you've filled them up full of your gummy treats, you put them back into the van, and then you take it all together and you put it into the refrigerator or the freezer so they set. It's Shaggy and Scooby! The most exciting element of the toy is it comes with this talking Scooby-Doo timer. Looks like Scooby to me. The children are gonna have to wait a certain amount of time to get the actual candy, so what can we do to entertain them? because the toy itself is in the refrigerator. So we came up with the idea of making a talking Scooby timer. Basically, it's a fun Scooby-Doo shape, a shape as a chef. So when you make your food, you turn on the timer, and he counts down with you of how long it takes to make it. Eight minutes to Scooby second time. So he talks you through the whole process. So once you've made all your fun treats and you put it in the refrigerator or the freezer, he continues to talk to you, and you can carry it around with you. He even has a little clip. So you can walk around the house and, you know, make sure that you don't miss your time of when it's ready. And he also has a feature that if you're bored and just wanted to say something, he'll talk to you. And near the end, he'll actually have a little 10-second countdown to tell you, oh, Scooby Snacks are ready. Not so fast. How did our Scooby Snack Maker go from idea to invention? We're not going anywhere until this mystery is solved. We all sit in a room and we brainstorm ideas as far as what would be the best toy to go along with a food idea. Jam Room is where all the creative and marketing people meet to discuss the ideas and brainstorm about the toys that we're going to make. We hang out here and play with the toys. We watch the cartoons on the TV. Very relaxed, creative, free-thinking environment. All the possibilities were considered. Should it look like a toaster? Like an oven? The designers, researchers, and marketers finally decided on a time-tested familiar shape. Our new toy should take the form of the gang's very own mystery machine. Holy munchies! Uh, this drawing is generally freehand, and as, as the idea is narrowed down, we'll eventually go to the computer. Our design team put their heads together and made the drawings come to life. Ken is our head designer, and he designs all of the toys from our concepts um, that we think of. We give them to Ken, and then Ken will draw them up for us. He'll then put them on the computer and make them ready to send to the manufacturer. This sure is interesting. And from those drawings came the very first working model called a prototype. Probably had about eight rounds of uh, prototypes for this before we finally got it uh, nailed down exactly the way we wanted it. So as you can see, this, uh, this is pretty close to what we were, were asking for from the factory. That's what I call teamwork. First, we actually make cardboard models, just very simple cardboard models that don't even have any color. And it just shows a simple function of how everything is going to work, and you have it to size and make sure everyone's happy with that. And every time you make a new cardboard model, you learn from it, and then you can make it better. Is there any problem duct tape can't solve? And then once you do the simple cardboard models, you hire some sculptors to then sculpt the actual models. There's a real evolution in, in the development of these, uh, these little guys. It originally started off as the bottles being the character themselves. 
Unfortunately, there's some manufacturing issues do in doing this because Scooby's got a very distinctive look and as you can see, this looks a little bit like Scooby, but maybe not so much. So we ran into problems there as the uh, product evolved was we decided that we would, rather than try to make something that roughly looked like Scooby, it really didn't. We went to more of kind of a relief sculpting of Scooby and Shaggy kind of chasing each other around the same bottle. So then you get both characters and you kind of get them in the action that you see them on the show. Yeah. <laughs> this is the paint shop, paint model shop, where all the painters paint all of our products. We have about four painters and uh, one paint department manager. Usually this is uh, prototypes to be sent to Hong Kong. We make like three of each usually. So these get hand painted. Then the stuff that goes into production is all painted in Hong Kong. You have to put on a lot of thin coats with a lot of water in it so it doesn't crack because it'll pool up and it makes bubbles and things. And put a lot of thin coats with water, they all lay on top of each other really smoothly. Sometimes if it's, if it's mainly one color, we'll airbrush it in our spray room and that's a lot faster. If it's just one like this, it's sometimes just as fast just to hand paint it on. Wow, this place is pretty impressive. Meanwhile, back in the test kitchens, research continued on the quest to find the perfect snack food. What kind of snack does a Scooby-Doo fan crave? Maybe these will set you right. Scooby snacks, jalapeno and applesauce blend, the best. It was actually a fun process to taste the food. You actually got excited to taste the food. You have the best job ever. You get to eat Scooby snacks 365 days a year, even more in leap years. <laughs> The inventor, so to speak, is inventing all of these flavors or mixing all the appropriate ingredients to come up with the grape flavor. Do you ever share recipes? They send us all the flavors, and as a group, we have meetings where we actually taste all the food to make sure that it tastes really good. So um, we would just have a huge taste testing party. <laughs> I still don't get how these little toys can make all that noise. To get the Scooby-Doo timer to talk, we brought in the voice talent of Scott Innes to make some noise. Scooby-Dooby-Doo! <laughs> and then the ingredients are packaged in boxes and shipped to every supermarket in the world. The toy box was just as important and had to incorporate all the fun qualities of the Scooby-Doo experience. There's a development process for the packaging just like the actual toy. This is uh, actually one of the final versions of the packaging. The main objective of the packaging is to show how fun the toy is and let people know what exactly the toy does while showing off the fun characters. Before anyone at home can see it, it's off to the factory to begin production. There it is, Scoob, the king of tasty treats. Oh, the Scooby Snack Factory. Step on it, Fred. We don't want to miss our tour. At the factory, all the parts are assembled and finally shipped to the newest generation of fun-loving and food-loving fans. So basically, we make a set of tools for each component here, and it's all made of steel. And then you do a run of your toy, and then once you finish your run, the tools are actually literally hung up on the walls of the manufacturer's plant. And so when you decide to make another run of this exact same toy, they take the tools off the wall, they put them back on the production line, and they start all over. So you have the tools for a very long time. Doesn't that look exciting? Yeah. It won't be a long time before kids everywhere will hear about their favorite new food toy. We have a commercial that's made, so we hire a production company, and we hire all the kids, all the actors, and we do the set, they make the food, you have your commercial. It's my Scooby Snacks Maker. Yummy! I'm Shaggy. Oh, it's Scooby, please. Can we make more? Sure. I'll fill the tray. I'll load the van. Talking Scooby Snacks Maker makes scooby -licious snacks. Talking Scooby Snacks Maker includes everything you see. It was great fun. I think the commercial turned out to be really great. Showing all the kids having fun, excited to go make Scooby Snacks because that's like the main component of the show. Everyone knows about Scooby Snacks, and so that's why it's called the Talking Scooby Snacks Maker. Scooby Snacky-Doo!